Hey, what's up toy fiends? Welcome to Irukanji Toys. I'm Factor and this is my channel where I tell you all about the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years on how to make designer toys as well as kind of delving into the community here in Melbourne and Southeast Asia and just talking to people and live streaming and interviewing and all that kind of stuff. So in this episode, I'm going to go over a tool that is one of the most important tools that I own, which I haven't really covered before, maybe a little bit in a previous video, but I'm really going to go in depth today on my airbrush. Yeah. This thing, yeah, like next to water and super glue, this thing is really, really important to me. So, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm just going to give you a bit of a thorough rundown on why an airbrush is so important to you as a designer toy maker. Check it out. Alright guys, this is my airbrush. It's a Japanese Iwata airbrush. They're pretty common um, because they're just really, really good. I bought this airbrush probably about seven years ago and honestly... It's still, it's still going strong. Okay, so this is it here. Now I've just cleaned this actually, but um, I'll talk about cleaning in a little bit. So this is the uh, HP CH version. You can get a whole bunch of different types of water airbrushes. Um, some are more basic, some are a little more advanced. This is kind of in the middle range of them. Um, not quite sure what it set me back. Maybe 250 Australian dollars. But I'm really... I, it was so long ago that I just... I can't remember what it was. So, the biggest piece of advice that I will give you if you're going to get an airbrush is this. Do not buy a cheap airbrush. Do not buy one of those ones for 50 bucks. Do not buy like one of those little eBay things. Do not do it. I mean, you can if you want, but to be completely honest with you, you're going to be replacing it in a year or two, and it's just going to cost you more money in the long run anyways. So save up your bucks um, and purchase yourself something like an Awada. There's other brands out there, um, you know, but for me... And a water is, is great. Seven years I've had this thing. And it's still still going strong. Yes, I have replaced a couple of parts in it here and there. Um, most notably the needle and another part that I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but by and large, like, this thing's, you know, still in perfect condition. It works. An airbrush is like anything, right? Like, if you look after it, it'll, it'll last you a lifetime. Well, okay, maybe not like everything, um, but if you look after it, it will last you for quite a while. Um, comes with the cap. Uh, to be honest, and I'll show you some airbrushing and painting a bit later, I don't really use the cap that much because I like to be able to quickly come in and out. Um, the good thing about this, like the action on this is really, really nice. Um, but the CH has uh, a little feature here, and it's kind of like a little air regulator okay so if I'm working on stuff I don't need to go back to the compressor and change the pressure or anything like that I can actually just adjust the airflow here and I can go from wide open all the way down to closed and this is how I can get really really thin lines really thin details now the majority of the time I've been using my airbrush for base coats right like base coats most of my painting for the last couple of years has been really, really basic. And I think that I've mentioned in some of the other painting videos, like this one up here. I don't know which side it is. It's up there. Um, one of the areas that I really want to improve on is painting. Uh, so yesterday, my buddy Ko came over and he just showed me some of the ways in which he does his airbrushing. So... I'll show you a little bit of that later, and I'll show you some of the techniques that I'm going to use. I'm just going to basically experiment with it. But, yes, like having this here, this little adjustable airflow, it's, it's really a godsend. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to learn when you get your new airbrush, especially something like this, 
is how to disassemble it. Because it's an airbrush, it will clog. It will stop working at the most inopportune time when you're in the middle of trying to paint something. It will, you know, it'll, it'll piss you off at some stage, right? But the quickest way to get up back up and running is to learn how to disassemble it. So I'm just going to show you how I disassemble this one because, well, why the hell not? I'm going to just move this case out of the way. So relatively straightforward. Unscrew here. And I, I mean, I know this off by heart now, right? So unscrew here. Okay. And this is how you can actually go through and clean the individual pieces. All right. Unscrew here. Do not... Do not lose any of the pieces of your airbrush. This is the needle. Be very, very careful of the needle, okay? The needle is ultra, ultra sharp. And yes, I have stabbed myself with it. And if you're not careful, man, like this thing is so sharp that it'll go down to bone before you even realize it. It didn't quite go down to bone when I stabbed myself, but yeah, it's pretty painful. Um, when you're pulling it out, you know, this is actually one of the most fragile parts of your airbrush, okay? Because if you even damage or nick or bend that absolutely, like, totally, totally sharp end of your <laughs> needle, it's that's it. you got to get a new needle. And as much as I love the Awadas, spare parts for an Awada, like, you know, I, I do have some spare parts and stuff. Spare parts for the Iwata are freaking expensive, man. They're freaking expensive. Something like this, a little 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 thing like this, this is like 30 bucks, man. Like 30, 40 bucks, you know? Needles are, I don't know. I haven't looked at the price for a while because I haven't screwed up a needle. Needles are maybe like 40 bucks, right? So you don't want to screw up your needle. You want to be really, really careful, okay? So then you just disassemble and unscrew here. Now, the reason I'm showing you why, as I said, how to disassemble your airbrush is because you are going to have to clean it. You can run um, thinner and stuff through it in a pinch, and sometimes that'll unclog it and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes it'll just be really, really stubborn, and you just got to pull the damn whole thing apart and just, you know, just clean it, right? So, you know, and there's another valve here. I'm not going to take that off because there's a little finicky piece in there that's annoying. You can take this off as well. But most of the time, it'll be clogging in here, or it'll be clogging in here. And this is a two-part piece here, ah. right? Okay. And then right on the very tip here, okay, is a little, little, tiny, tiny. I don't know. It's like a nozzle that the that the needle fits into. Oh man, I've lost this piece before, and uh, this is another really expensive piece. For this little tiny piece of metal, you're looking at like 40 bucks, okay? So don't lose this. But a lot of your problems, if it's not cogged in here, and it's not cogged in paint, or your needle isn't sticking, a lot of your problems are going to come from this little thing. I have a little bit of like this sealant stuff that, and you know what, I'm going to take it off, just because, and I'm always paranoid when I'm doing this, because... A, if you screw this up, you can thread it and you just can't get it back on. All right, so it's that big. Like, it's tiny. And you can see there's a little bit of sealant on there. Now, that's because sometimes when you're using airbrush, it'll go... And usually, it's because this is either cogged or there's air escaping or something like that. Okay, but when you're cleaning it, make sure you keep an eye on this if you're going to take this thing off, man, because... I lost it. Yesterday, when Keo was here, I lost it. And somehow, miraculously, I glanced down at the ground and went, holy crap, there it is. And I found it. Otherwise, that's it. Airbrush out of commission. So you can disassemble it. And the great thing about the Awadas, man, is that they're so rock solid, you know? And you disassemble it to clean it, okay? You can clean it in a whole multitude of ways. Water will not work. Um, you can use uh, like a thinner, like the Mr. Hobby thinner that I have. Um, if it's particularly stubborn, and people don't recommend this, but I'll be really honest with you, I've been doing it for seven years and I've never had a problem. You know, they're like, oh yeah, it'll kill the seals, but acetone. 
Acetone has been one of the best cleaners of my airbrush over the last seven years. Um, I just get a jar, I disassemble it, I just throw everything into the jar and, and I leave it for like an hour or two. And the acetone just cleans it completely. And as I said, people sit there and they're like, oh yeah, but you're going to ruin the seals, you're going to do that. Man, it's never happened. Never happened in, in seven years. Obviously, acetone is poison. <laughs> don't drink it. Um, don't inhale it. Have a ventilated area. Be safe. But that's great. However, recently, and this is a topic for another video, which I will go into. Uh, recently, I have come into possession of an ultrasonic cleaner. And I have been using the ultrasonic cleaner to be able to actually clean this thing. And honestly, man, yeah. Like, what... what what was my life before I had this ultrasonic cleaner? I just pull it apart, dump it in, and uh, off it goes. So we're just going to reassemble it now. You can see, like, you know, there's the trigger. Ow! Okay, no, it wasn't too spiky. Okay, there's a little tiny thing here. You can just put that and then screw it back in. Okay. Make sure that's pretty fairly tight. Check your action. Yep. That's going okay. Now let's put the needle in. You notice that I haven't put these bits on yet, the nozzles. So you just want to be careful when you're re-threading this. Okay, A, don't stab yourself. B, be really careful because there's no way you don't ever want to damage that tip, right? Just don't. So there are lubricants and uh, I do have some lubricants somewhere. I, I don't know where, you know. And then just kind of push it through until you just see the sharp end popping out here. And it didn't do it. That was very strange. So let's just do this again. So what I'm saying, you need to be just like really, really pedantic and careful about this. Some lubricant would be good. I just don't know where I put it at the moment. Oh, that might be why. Let's just push this down. Okay, all right, there we go. And yep, now I can see, I can see the tip of the needle coming out the end here on the end cap. Just make sure that's, that's tight. And maybe it'll sputter and I'll have to come back and put some sealant on that little bit. But for all intents and purposes, that's fine. Okay, so it's in there snug. Let's just put the this bit on. Okay, and then let's just screw this in. This is so that you can control your action. And then let's go and put the nozzles back on. Right. Honestly, people are always like, oh man, disassembling my airbrush and stuff. But you can reassemble it and disassemble it in like a minute, under a minute. It's so quick. Once you actually know your airbrush, you can you can just get through it. So I got two different nozzles. This one, I generally tend to use for base coats and stuff. But I'm actually going to be painting uh, and stuff today. So I'm going to use a bit of a, a narrower nozzle. So be being careful not to damage that damn thing. Okay. And there we go. All good. Action's a little stiff, but oh, maybe because I just need to undo that. There we go. Yeah, great. So that's that's my airbrush, all right? One other thing, do not skimp on a good compressor for your airbrush. I will show you my compressor in a minute. Um, don't skimp on that as well, because that's kind of like your other workhorse. The good thing about getting a really good compressor is that you can use it for your airbrush and you can use it for your pressure pot. So it has dual uses. You just have a different, you know, thing on it. So that's my airbrush. Solid. All right, cool. That is my airbrush. The Iwata. HP CH. Not the be all and end all of airbrushes. There are other airbrushes, but this is my airbrush. Okay, so I've done a breakdown. I've just gone over through a little tiny things. I actually do have to paint a couple of toys for a This Is Not A Toy Scene exhibition that we have coming up in two weeks. And one would have thought that I would have done a lot more painting of toys in lockdown, but I didn't. So I'm just going to take you through 
a couple of my techniques and honestly these are just really really basic basic airbrushing techniques because I'm not a master and I'm not great at it but you know maybe you'll you'll see a couple of little things um, I have covered a few of these things in a previous video but this is specifically about telling you how to work with your airbrush all right check it I don't, I don't know. I don't, anyways, here's me using the airbrush. <laughs> All right, toy fans, this could be an epic failure because it's 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday and I've been out at my friend Knox open studio and drank a shitload of booze and I'm going to do what, you know, normally people just do sometimes when you're an artist, you get fucking drunk and you make some art but I'm gonna do continue this airbrush tutorial because let's face it um, I'm a really shit airbrusher and the only way I have the confidence to do this and to actually like go hey this is how I airbrush and do shit is by getting drunk and getting rid of my insecurities because as artists we all have these fucking insecurities so not to belabor the point if this is not cool and like I make mistakes, it's totally fine. Um, hey, I'm not the greatest airbrusher, but I'm gonna teach myself here and maybe show you a few things. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and explain like all the things that I've kind of set up um, to get started airbrushing and explain to you kind of like what I need and. Oh man, there's so much shit on this table. Like, there's so many things, like, so many different things. So, I'm just going to start. Okay, first up, you need your toy. Right? Like, you need something to paint. Um, I'm working on the Land Speeder Project, which is basically a customization of a Star Wars Land Speeder. You can kind of see the Land Speeder in here. It started off as this, and it turned into this. I've never done a vehicle before. Um, this is totally new to me. Um, never done a vehicle. I've had so much damn fun with this. And Chipta from Good Guys Never Win and Lobos Collectibles here in Melbourne put together this show and they they resin cast this land speeder and I built this on it and this has been like so much fun. It's also been killing me because... I kind of went a bit overboard, like I usually do, but man, so much fun. So you need your toy. You're going to airbrush something. Well, you need something to airbrush, right? Okay. All right. Next up, gloves. So I always wear gloves when I'm airbrushing because, you know, shit, fucking paint, like fucking paint goes everywhere. Um, the problem is that I always buy gloves that it, that it, Look, it's like condoms, right? Like, sometimes you buy the right size, sometimes you buy the wrong size, and sometimes they're comfortable, and sometimes they're just really not. Um, I always accidentally buy the ones that are not the right size, but airbrushing, yeah, gloves, because, you know, you're going to get paint all over yourself. <clears throat> okay, all right. Next up, you need your airbrush. Okay, so I've got my water. Don't be charging right now. Oh, okay, got my water. It should be nice and clean. I cleaned it out last time. Yeah, maybe I'll use the cap. I don't know. Fuck knows. I don't know. All right, cool. Um, should be. I mean, I'm really, really hoping that this doesn't clog or fuck up. Um, you know, got your brush. Cool. Um, you need some air. Cool. So, like, I just bring you over here, and I've got my compressor down here. It's in a water compressor. It's seen. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit dirty and shit, right? Okay, but it's lasted me like many, many years. Oh, that's my fault. And they're my socks, and I do not wear matching socks because it can't be fucked. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyways, so you need a compressor. I usually keep my compressor around about 10 to 20, uh, depends on who shit clogs, right? 
So I'm just going to screw it in here. Um, every so often you'll see me like going Ooh, over here because that's where my laptop is. Seems seems enough air. Let's just check. Uh, turn up a little bit more. Cool. So we got our airbrush. We got our air. What else do we need? We need paint. Okay, so for better or worse, I'm gonna do red over this silver. Okay. I wanted like the Acura red, um, but I only have these two reds. Oh, oh yeah, okay, the video camera's here. I have these two reds, so I'm gonna kinda combine them and just see what the fuck I can do. Um I'm gonna start trying the Vallejo because I love the Mr. S like the Mr. 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 Paint. Uh. <laughs> Reminder: I've been drinking tonight. Okay, um, I love this paint, but I I just want to try some new stuff. Okay, so you need to have your paint. I have a big jar of alcohol here because, well, my airbrush fucks up or something like that. I'm gonna do that. I have this. This is an airbrush cleaner. Okay. It is the 5618 airbrush cleaner. And can I advise you to never ever fucking buy this shit? Fucking waste of money. Does absolutely nothing. It's like pouring fucking water in your airbrush. It does nothing. It's a piece of shit. It says, oh, use as a rinse in between colors while painting. To clean airbrush and spray gun after use. Oh, too dry. No, man, I don't even know what's in this shit. But, like, <laughs> I don't know what's in it. It is useless. Like, I get more fucking use out of taking some water or I could piss in my airbrush and it would probably be way better. Okay? <laughs> Don't buy this shit. It's a waste of money. Does anybody want this? I'll give it to you. Okay? Um, if I want to clean my airbrush, I'll just use a leveling thinner. Okay? Like a... Or a thinner of some kind. Acetone. Alcohol. Uh, this is alcohol that came off, you know, stuff. Alcohol, acetone, alcohol. Like, it's good. Okay. Um, I have this. It's a little pot. Um, it's pretty cool. You just put your airbrush in here and. It's really good for just, like, getting rid of shit from your airbrush without having to spray. Uh, you'll notice this piece of paper that I've put down. It's got a lot of stuff. This is, like, post exhibition. It's, like, a lot of shit. But these little things, like,. You can spray into it and it kind of vents out. Uh, they're just really, really handy for getting rid of excess moisture and stuff. Okay. I have paper towel. Because paper towel is like a god. Um, well, you know, like a pantheon. Uh, it's useful for pretty much everything. Like, you know, you're going to clog. Your airbrush is going to clog. It's good for cleaning. Cleaning, blah, 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 wiping shit off. Whatever. It's paper towel, man. It's paper towel. It'll be cool. Okay. I have my mask because I'm in an enclosed area, all right? And uh, you need a mask. If you're in an enclosed area, even if you're outside, you need a fucking mask. Wear a mask. I've been painting graffiti and street art for years and sometimes I don't wear a mask and I will suffer for days afterwards and I'm probably gonna like have some weird fucking shit come up in the next 10, 15 years. And that's cool. Wear a freaking mask, okay? Mask. And I think that's about it. Like, that's all that we actually need. Um, oh. Want some little plastic containers because I'm going to mix this paint and get it ready for the airbrush. Okay. Oh, one other thing. That one's empty, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> Yeah, it's 11.48. Uh, uh, hey, Moondog. Uh, not saying, just anything. like. But, you know, maybe you want to be a sponsor to a artist that's making toys and painting toys at 12 o'clock at night. Just saying, like, the fizzle, it, it's been... Good. Anyways, look. If it's 11.48 p.m. on a Saturday night, maybe you want to have some kind of drink or a soda something fizzy. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Oh. One last thing. 
Very, very important. Do you have braces? Know anybody that has braces? See these things? These things are fucking awesome. These are designed for people with braces so that you can go and get in between your teeth. But they are also really, 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 really good for cleaning out the nozzle of an airbrush. I keep a couple of packets of these on hand and keep them like there. Um, my nozzle is a 0.2. I do not know why I'm using a 0.2 when I should be using a 0.3 and it clogs up a lot. Okay, but just keep these in mind. Like they come in various different sizes. Um, but yeah, they're really, really, really handy. And I think that's about it. And I'm probably going to start airbrushing now. Might fuck up a whole bunch of stuff, but eh, we'll see how it goes. All right? Cool. Okay, so off camera, I just had a complete fucking disaster. <laughs> Murphy's Law, right? Like, my microphone actually fell off the stand. <laughs> it fell off the stand, hit my toy, and it snapped the sail off. The only way I could actually, like, get the sail to stick back on was to use some freaking kicker. Um, I've wiped it all down, hopefully. Murphy's Law, when you're doing drunk paints, um, not advisable. Don't paint and drink, okay? Unless you're inspired. And, like, sometimes as creative people, we're just fucking inspired to do this. Hopefully the kicker doesn't affect the paint. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for the moment, and I'm going to mix my paint. So I was going for, like, an Acura motorbike red, right? Like, I don't have that colour. But I do have these two colours, so I'm going to mix this up in here and I'm going to hope to hell that it actually works. So... Oh, fuck. <sighs> I'm going to have to probably mix a fair bit of this just to keep, like, you know... Oh, yeah, it's really thick. It's a bit dried out. So, and that's okay because we're going to thin it out. Let's just pour bunch oh god gloggy i mean this is actually pretty close this one is actually kind of pretty close to the akira motorbike red maybe i don't need to mix it hmm interesting i actually think i actually think i'm gonna leave this color i i kind of like this um <laughs> it's not even coming out of there so okay I'm going to mix this one, put it in the airbrush, keep that in the pot, and then maybe put it in there. So, there's probably about that much. I've got a 0.2 needle. I've got a 0.2 needle. I don't know why. Use some Mr. Living Thinner here. And I'm just going to mix this in here. I should be using the Aqueous Thinner, but it doesn't really make a big difference. You want it at least partially thick, but not like really, really, really thick. You want it nice, nice and opaque, but not really, really thin. And I have a feeling that might be, oh, no, that might be good. Yeah, I don't know, maybe a little bit more. Let's just try to dig a bit more out of here. Uh, yeah, fuck. I'm almost out of this red. <clears throat> it's okay. I've got a backup red. I mean, it seems good, but it just doesn't seem like it's thick enough. Let's grab a bit more. This is the point where I'm probably going to be changing my glove because I'm going to use this hand to hold the piece. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, fuck. See? Really need to get the right size gloves. Cool. Have a, have a clean glove on whichever glove side you're going to actually, you know, hold your piece with. So, just gonna pour this in here. 
looks good enough. And let's see. Oh yeah. Absolutely perfect, right? <laughs> Fuck. Alright, this is what the cap's for. I don't always use it, but this seems pretty perfect, so Alright. Maybe I won't touch it. Maybe I'll just uh maybe I'll just start this way, okay? Oh yeah. You guys can't fucking see that, can you? I feel like the pressure might be a little too- Oh shit! Dude. I am the fucking worst. The fucking worst. What did I do wrong? I can already, like, fucking feel it, man. So I'm just going to go in a bit finer detail now and start covering. I just turned, turned the adjustment down on this. So I'll come in and like just do, I'm not worried about details. I'm going to come and hand paint and do more airbrushing and stuff and more colors. I'm not worried about like overflow. I'm not worried about like bits. It, it doesn't matter. Like I don't give a shit. It, it looks like more authentic with mistakes anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I've just done a really, really basic coat and I've just put some thinner into here. I'm just going to wash out my airbrush. I think that this stuff is just basically crap. Like, yeah, you can see I went for the red. It's kind of cool. I actually don't have any silver paint. I don't think I have any silver paint. So I'm just going to empty this out and clean this off. Yeah, don't worry about spilling. This is why you got paper down. So, it's had a bit of thinner in there, and I'm just gonna like. It wasn't clogging or anything, just uh, between colors. I always want to make sure I clean my airbrush. Looks good. Still good. Okay, so it's the next morning, and I am assessing the damage. <laughs> uh, I might be a little hungover. So, I made one huge mistake in the fact that I don't actually have any any silver Mr. Aqueous so uh, I was gonna hand paint and dry brush a bit around and touch it all up but what I'm actually gonna have to do now is kind of go through and airbrush silver on the silver bits and then I might have to mask those off and I do need to do another coat of ray so I'll do that I'll airbrush the silver parts and then I'll mask off some areas and then I'll do another coat of red uh, I'm not going to get fancy, and all I'm going to do then is the sails, and, and that'll be it. I'm not going to do fancy colours. I'll come back through and hand paint a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so I'm going to do that, but, you know, the airbrush has been sitting here. Um, I looked at it just before, but I'm a bit worried that it's going to be, you know, not clean. So I have this, like, you know, old thinner. Oh, I keep forgetting, I've got to readjust this. I have this old thinner here um, and I'm gonna just put that into a cup and just quickly because it should be, airbrush should be fine. Um, I'm just gonna quickly dip, you know, get a bit of thinner and then run it through and then empty it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come and clean the tip off. Because sometimes paint gets clogged in here. Plus, I kind of want to just wash it out of the red so that I can put the silver through. 
here. Just being careful. And then let's have a look and see if there's anything on the tip here. And yeah, there's a bit, yeah, there's a bit dried off. Oh man. Okay, yeah, so there's, there's a bit dry. And so I'll just clean that off. And then, yeah. Mm. Should be okay. And then just check this. Yep, that should be fine. But I'll just clean it anyways. I'm just being careful with the needle when I put it back in there. And just clean this out a bit. And then I'm just gonna dip it back in the thinner again, run a little bit through. Push it out, and then just clean out. Just clean out the pot a little bit. And should, in theory, be good to go. Okay, now the other thing is that I only have this silver and this is a monster color and it kind of dried up a bit. I've added some thinner to it and hopefully it'll be okay, but I generally don't like mixing paints. Um, I've had some bad reactions before where it's totally screwed things up. So I'm going to start down on the seats in here with this. Um, I don't know if it's going to go through my airbrush okay. I just need to test it and make sure it doesn't clog it. And make sure that it's it's good. So I'll come and do the seats and the seats just to just to check and make sure that it's going to be all right. So let's just check and uh, see the consistency of this. I mean, it looks okay on the surface of things. <laughs> looks like it's going to be good, but let's just try it, shall we? Looks good. So I'm just going to come in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once again. Okay, so that's the sails done. Now I'm going to come back in and touch up the red because it needs another coat. The only freaking problem, man, is that I have almost none of this left. So I'm going to have to be really, really, really careful. And if I run out, I'm going to have to be really, really, really creative in trying to figure this shit out. I don't know. Hopefully I have enough that I can just do one more layer and clean it all up. And that's it. That's that's all my red gone. So, last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back through and touch up some of the silver and fix that. I can see where I've kind of oversprayed a bit. And then that's it. That's the airbrushing. That's it. All right. Well, that's that's it. That's as much as I'm going to do. Um, I'm out of the red anyways, so. I mean, I could go through and keep touching it up and fixing things and that, but it's going to be pretty grungy anyway. So like, I'm going to come through, do some hand painting, and then I'll do a wash, and then I'll do some dry brushing. And I might come through with a bit of sandpaper and scratch it in places just so that there's like, you know, that's why I did the, the base coat as a silver so that I can scratch the paint away and you see like the exposed metal underneath it. Um, yeah, so... Uh, 
That's it. Look, admittedly, I'm not the world's greatest airbrusher, as I have said many times before. Every time I do something like this, I'm learning something new. If you have any tips, please drop them. Um, I listen to everything and try to improve my game. I haven't done airbrushing like this a hell of a lot. Usually I just do like a flat base coat and then paint over the top of that and color it. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm happy and I'm making progress. I've got a couple more days. I still have to finish the figures for this. You know, like I'm gonna have these kind of guys in here you know, woo, well, not, not that colour, but you know what I mean. So I've got to do three of these, and I've almost, uh, hold on, I'll, um, yeah, this is one of the other ones I made, um, I've actually, yeah, the other version he's drying outside, but I've actually chopped him up and made him so that he can actually fit and sit down in here, and then I'll have another one, you know, it's cool, I, I'm looking forward to finishing this, <laughs> I feel like I've been working on this for quite a long time because you know I had the exhibition um, in between and and all of that but uh, yeah uh, I'm happy it's good enough it's good enough good enough to go and now hand paint and have a bit of fun with so yeah that's my basic airbrushing <laughs> sweet all right everybody that's my really basic tutorial on how I use my airbrush obviously I have a lot to learn when it comes to painting with an airbrush and using it and how to do layers and pretty much I just I have a lot to learn on uh, how to use it but that should give you a really basic overview on how I am using it up to this point in time uh, I hope to get better and I hope that maybe some of the little tips and little things that I do with it are helpful for you uh, if you have any tips and things for me I would very much appreciate it if you just left a comment and told me some of your tips and stuff because as I said I'm a knowledge soak and I want to learn as much as I possibly can because it's an underused tool. It's one of the most important tools that I have because I use it for doing my base coats and everything but I don't really use it to paint up until now and that's something that I'm really looking forward to exploring. And I kind of did with this piece, and this is the end result. So the airbrushing turned out really well, and uh, I just challenged myself with this piece to go through and do like washes and dry brushing and highlights and all that kind of thing. And now I'm just really excited to explore painting a bit more because this is the first time I've ever actually painted anything like this. And now I kind of just want to make a lot more toys with textures so I can continue, you know, just exploring it. Anyways, Toy Fiends, that's another video for you, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, um, and please drop me comments or reach out on Instagram or anywhere you can contact me and just say, hey, you know. Um, we also have a Discord uh, for the This Is Not A Toy Scene group, and you should absolutely 100% join our Discord and hang out with other really cool toy makers and very, very talented people. Anyways, Toy Fiends, thanks for joining me again, and who knows what the next video will be, but it'll be something, <laughs> as usual. Take it easy, Toy Fiends. Cheers. Magoli, cha cha cha. Magoli, cha cha cha. Magoli, cha cha cha. Magoli. That's my Magoli song because if you have watched any of these videos and you have actually stuck out to the end, you would know that I do enjoy making my own Magoli and that I generally drink a lot of it when I'm doing these videos. This is my latest brew, this is the Chrysanthemum Muckley, and eh, it's alright, it's not bad. It's not as good as my Waddle Seed and Yuzu one, but I drank the fuck out of that and it's all gone. So, I have this. Mm. I would highly, highly recommend you go and buy some Muckley, or just learn how to make your own. It's pretty easy. Reach out, ask me, I can tell you. Anyways. 
if you don't want to drink, don't drink. Absolutely. Don't have to drink. Don't have to drink to enjoy life. This is just me. But you do you. You do you, boo. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs>